I'm Jason Burroughs, Senior Storage Solutions Engineer with Micron Technology. At Micron, we're committed to providing end-user and OEM customers with flash storage solutions that address data demands for enterprise applications, regardless of the workload. One of the most pervasive enterprise environments today is virtualization. This enables IT managers to optimize their data center hardware and allocate parts of it based on the needs of users and applications, creating a much more efficient data center infrastructure. There are many flavors of virtualization, server, desktop, network, and storage. But today, specifically, we're talking about VMware Virtual SAN, which is VMware's software-defined storage solution. We partnered with VMware to create an all-flash vSAN using Micron's high-speed, low-latency SSDs, including PCIe, SATA, and SAS. From the beginning, Micron has been a big fan and supporter of vSAN. And now that it supports all flash configurations, why do anything else? Today, we'll look at how vSAN is managed using the vSphere web client. All right, let's dive in. So the configuration in our lab is four standard Intel servers. These are our hosts, each one with two sockets and 256 gigs of RAM. For storage, each one has a single 700 gig P420M PCIe drive. That's the cache layer. In addition, each one has seven one terabyte M510DC SATA drives, and that's the capacity tier. So these guys are hosts, and they're all connected through two 10 gig Ethernet switches. Now this capacity, when you look at the formatted usable capacity, comes out to 24 terabytes of capacity and about 2.4 terabytes of cache. So you manage vSAN the same way you manage the rest of your virtual infrastructure, using the vSphere client. vSAN is one of the new features that can only be managed through the web client so that's where we start. We start out at the cluster level, then to the Manage tab, then to Virtual SAN to the General tab. There, we can see that we have four hosts, 32 total drives in use, which is 24 terabytes of capacity, and right now we have 19 terabytes of free space. Because VMware only recently began supporting all-flash vSAN, there's a few quirks here and there. For example, right here, it says data disk zero, but really, we're using flash drives as data disks so you just need to ignore that section. These systems have eight total drives each, so the number 32 is correct. Now notice down below, it says that the on-disk format is 2.0. This is an important point for people who started out with vSAN in ESX 5.5 and then upgraded, but it's not relevant to new installs. Next, let's click on disk management and you can see the disk groups. These disk groups are created for use with vSAN on each server. Each disk group contains exactly one flash device for cache purposes and anywhere between one and seven drives, either spinning or flash, for capacity purposes. You can see here they're all mounted and healthy, and the hosts can see each other on the same network. Up above, it shows group one. There's also the concept of a fault domain, which can help you plan for a rack, a tray, or other organizational unit failure, uh, which would be prevented from causing downtime. Next, let's click on health. This is a new feature of vSAN 6.0 U1 and it's really useful. It connects in real time to the VMware hardware compatibility list to confirm that your hardware is supported, and it shows a few other cool things too. This tab is actually the configuration tab for the health plugin. To use it, you go up to monitor, and then click on health. This tab is where you set the settings for the health plugin. To use the health plugin, you go to the monitor tab, and then click on virtual SAN, and then click on health. Here, we can see our data health is good, now we do see some warnings, which I want to show you. When you look at the details of those warnings, for example, the controller driver, you see that this isn't actually an error, but it doesn't seem to recognize the controller for the P420M. It turns out that this is a limitation of the current version of the health check. The controller is built into the drive since it's a PCIe drive. Ordinarily, a drive would use a SAS or a SATA controller, and that would be checked for compatibility. As you can see here for the M510DC, it's the Avago LSI Mega Raid SAS Invader controller. Also, you can see that the MTIP driver is flagged as well. That's another one you can ignore. This is the driver for the P420M, and it actually is the correct version. Uh, these are issues we're working on with VMware to address in a future release of the tool, and rest assured that these components and their drivers are fully supported. Now finally, let's go to resyncing components. This tab will show you in real time what data is currently being moved from one drive to another behind the scenes. This happens when you take action to move things around, such as changing storage policies, which we'll show in a future series. 
I hope you're just as excited as we are about deploying an all-flash vSAN. Keep an eye out for the follow-up to this video where we'll cover storage policy-based management and thick provisioning, as well as provide a demonstration of how Micron's all-flash vSAN holds up to a synthetic workload. To learn more, follow us on Twitter at Micron Storage and connect with us on LinkedIn. For new articles, blogs, and videos, visit us at micron.com virtualization.